Hello everyone, welcome to Open Voice of the People. This is Open Diplomacy. I'm Ambo Makasa. I have a guest. My today's guest is Pakistan Ambassador to Ethiopia, Ambassador Joseph Abbas, and we're going to discuss about the bilateral ties between the two countries and the current issue in Ethiopia. Hey, stay tuned. Excellency, first, thank you for joining us. And to begin with, and how do you see, I mean, what is your take on the long standing uh, diplomatic relation between Ethiopia and Pakistan? Oh, yes. Uh, Pakistan and Ethiopia both enjoy a very close and cordial relationship. And uh, 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 Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali, Bhatti, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was the one who uh, instructed to open up the embassy in Ethiopia. And that was 1973 when he visited here and met with Emperor Haile Selassie and establish the diplomatic linkages with your country. Since then, we have been in very close contact with your country at international forums, at regional forums, and between Afroasian coordination, NAM, and uh, all other important uh, multilateral forums. The two countries have been enjoying each other's confidence, each other's trust, and each other's partnership. And uh, there are many uh, uh, layers of relationship between the two from people to people to government to government relationship and if I encompass the entire uh, spectrum of our relations I would say that it is very healthy relationship very friendly relationship and the two countries have a complete trust on each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see how do you see the current Ethiopia Pakistani relation in terms of diplomacy trade and obedience uh, Pakistan and Ethiopia both uh, have a trade volume around 50 million US dollars. From the regional perspective, it is not bad, but there is a lot of scope to be improved. So I would say that the two countries need to promote their transportational linkages. My focus since I arrived here in your capital is that, that Ethiopian Airways may start its regular flights from Pakistan to from Ethiopia to Pakistan so that the people those who are interested to establish their businesses doing trade and economic activities should have a direct access and their perishable commodities especially the food one should be transported quickly from the two countries and right now if you look at the list of our products which are being exchanged or traded between the two countries are mostly agricultural. So I would say that agricultural commodities between the two uh, countries need rapid transportational facilities and less and less custom barriers, less and less trade restrictions. So the moment all these issues are resolved, I hope it will be, it would be multiplied many folds from 50 million dollars to 100 million dollars and there is a target which the government has given to us and i am in contact with many uh, of the uh, many uh, trade bodies chambers of commerces and other industrialists based in ethiopia based in pakistan to see each other's potential and then start creating more windows of opportunities for people so that the trade volume should also be increased Plus, the people-to-people -people linkages should also be improved. And the second most important factor, sector is uh, the cooperation in the field of education. I personally believe that the African students have a very competitive educational facilities available in Pakistan. But uh, they need to know that uh, in medicine, in engineering, in uh, law, Islamic studies, they have a very good opportunities available in Pakistan. So let's promote this idea through your uh, valuable network and inform the people of Ethiopia that Pakistan is a is a wonderful destination for their education and for their business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Great. Uh, coming to the major issues in the country, uh, you know that Western media, before they uh, dismantled some country, first they used their media as, as a weapon. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we can understand this from what happened in the Middle East and before distracting some country they used their media as weapon. Recently following the TPLF's attack and now the, 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 some media, including CNN and BBC were reporting at 
Labor, I mean, the TPLF is close to the city, as the TPLF is around 25 kilometers away from the capital. And this created, as, as the, the capital is in the turmoil, but as we are witnessing, nothing is happening in the city. And why they are doing this, and how do you see that? <laughs> Good question. Uh, first of all, I fully agree that the life in Addis Ababa is perfectly all right. There is no chaos. There is no turmoil and there is no disturbance at all. Roads are moving on, people are commuting from one place to another, children are going, shopping is being done, ladies are walking along the road and everything is going perfectly all right. Yes, uh, there is a sense of, sense of danger which is being percolated in the society. Why is that? You referring uh, to, the, to the case of media, that media, Western media is not playing its role. It is not a, exactly in that fashion, I would say. Uh, we need to build the trust of our people. For example, if OBN is really a great ne uh, media network and reliable network for the people of Ethiopia, then the, your, your responsibility becomes double. You should approach the people, tell them the reality and, and uh, fight uh, against the propaganda. Propaganda is very much a regular part of any war. So uh, you should not exclude it from your strategy. You keep it in your mind that the adversaries would definitely come against the steps which are being taken by the government in order to bring peace and stability in the country and you also need your parallel strategy to uh, give the right message or the message which your people know about your home. And there is also a one a very uh, uh, pertinent reason that uh, people, the sons of soil, the daughters of soil, they know the reality. No outsider can understand what you are. I'm, I'm ambassador of Pakistan, I have, I have been here for last one year. My understanding and my knowledge of your society is limited. I cannot give a complete answer to the questions which you are raising. So I believe that the perspective of indigenous people, local people is very, very important. So the job of Ethiopian media is to promote their perspective to the international community. The flow of international media is one-sided. It is coming from that end to this end. You also need to promote your response from this end to that end. I think the weakness is from this end to that end. If you raise your efforts, promote your, your struggle and show the people that what you are doing, then definitely people will start listening to you. Uh, so you are know, saying that the media supports in Ethiopia should work, and that they, they should say it again, please. The, the media in Ethiopia, so they should work in the language that the international community could understand. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. The media should tell the reality on the ground. Exactly, meaning if there are twenty channels or twenty media outlets from Ethiopia, all are talking in Amara, mm -hmm. in local languages. How can international community would under, would be able to understand you? Mm -hmm. So the responsibility falls on your shoulder that you are responsible to convey your message to international community. International community is perceiving something from different images and building their stories. You are living on the ground and you have your own resources. You need to build your narrative and also a narrative in the language which is understandable to the foreigners. So I think all responsibility falls on the Ethiopian media to promote their images to international community. Democracy uh, is just a majority rule. Yes. If, you are, if the majority elects you, you have a mandate to lead the country. Correct. But what we see in, in, in some countries, including Ethiopia, uh, to interfere in the internal affairs of some country, right. they use some rebel group as entry, as exit. In, why is that is happening and what has to be there so as to solve such thing and what except from the government? Uh, to understand this question, you need to know the regional politics. Is the Horn of Africa is the most f fragile region. Uh, 
there are so many wars and your country has recently concluded an agreement with Eritrea. That agreement is very, very important to bury the old anim animosities, to bury the old, you know, the fightings. So, Alhamdulillah, you are, you are blessed that the leadership of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmad has finally reached with a treaty of friendship or normalization of relationship with Eritrea. That was a big, big landmark success in the political history of Horn of Africa. And I believe that if with the same spirit, Ethiopia and the regional partners, Eritrea, Djibouti, Somalia, Kenya, South Sudan, Sudan, they keep on continuing their work and consolidate their partnership, all the internal strifes would be settled down. Right now, we see that some countries are interfering in the affairs of other countries. Internationally, legally speaking, this is not acceptable norm. And many, many societies in the world are disturbed because of unwanted, unnecessary, unwarranted interference from abroad, especially from the regional countries. So the recipe for solution in this region and uh, the, to promote uh, harmony and peace, I would suggest to the Ethiopian government and the people of Ethiopia that the regional harmony should be increased, the atmosphere of trust and confidence should be promoted, and people-to-people uh, -people exchanges, trade, business, education, socio-economic collaboration should be enhanced. Once this is promoted, I am 100% sure that the distrust, suspicions would automatically remove down. And then you will feel that the once you was feeling or no is now friend. The friend is coming, not an enemy. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, let's come to the relation between Pakistan and Ethiopia. In Pakistan, you do have many uh, ethnicities, and in Ethiopia, we do have the same, and then you do have different religion. Here, we do have different religion. But the last time you have raised an important issue, mm. uh, Prophet Muhammad sent his followers to Ethiopia. Yeah. Back then. Right. And uh, as the, you informed us that as there is a plan to create some religious. Um, visit between the two countries exactly and, uh, which which bring uh, the cultural relation and which promotes the great relationship between the two countries and could you brief us the progress of that is there any progress oh uh, uh, first of all you need to know that uh, the interreligious harmony is fundamental for a progressive society whether it is pakistan or it is ethiopia in pakistan uh, the largest majority are Muslims and then there are Christians and then there are Hindus and Sikhs. These are uh, the bigger, these are the big religions of uh, Pakistan. Here in your country, um, uh, Christianity is number one and then Muslims and then Jews and then some other minorities. So uh, you must be happy to see that your country, which is, was, which is the cradle of civilization and one of the ancient uh, civilization established here, uh, is a country of love and fraternity. People, whether you are Christian or whether you are Muslim or whether you are Jews, they are intermarried. They are living side by side. Their businesses and their jobs are together. And they are very happy and they are living in complete peace. So this is a matter of great satisfaction. So I would say uh, that if a country is enjoying such spirit, it has the potential to promote the religious heritage of that country. Pakistan is also rich in that heritage and Ethiopia is equally uh, blessed with that. So I would say uh, uh, the, 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 the potential of that cooperation, the potential of exchange of tourism is immense. But again, in the very first question, I refer to that there is a need to promote transportation linkages. Pe the movement of people from my country to your country, from your country to my country is very difficult. There is no direct linkages. Once 
Ethiopian Airways started a direct flight from or resumed rather not started it resumed it was there but they suspended it now there is a need to resume it once it is resumed these new vestas these new windows would be open to the people and then they will start coming to visit the holy shrines and to see that how uh, the history is blessed um, ethiopian people and how they are you know maintaining the the important um, uh, muslim christian jews uh, heritage in your country the other question is just uh, now pakistan is one of the developing country mm -hmm. especially in terms of technology now you're in a good place yeah how do you assess uh, the relation between the two countries in terms of technology transfer yeah very important uh, pakistan <coughs> pakistani scientists are working tremendously to improve the quality of life in Pakistan and they have played a critical role especially in the rural development sector you know likewise Ethiopia 60-65% of population of Pakistan lives in rural areas and the people have a direct dependence on agriculture whereas our agriculture our industrial base is based on agricultural produced so we have a set of agro industry plus the people's direct engagement with the agricultural sector so i uh, i would say that agriculture cooperation uh, between pakistan and ethiopia on agricultural sector is very vital and we have a tremendous uh, development in the in the formation of technology which is suited to our environment now the scientists from your country, if they start connecting with the scientists of Pakistani country, they can, they can adapt or they can readjust the equipment, the, the, the agricultural machinery, agricultural technology, according to your needs. It's a, our, our Pakistan is 60% is a flat country and 40% mountains. Your is 90% mountains and 10% flat. So there is a difference. So according to the landscape, according to the climatic conditions, the technology needs to be modified. So the idea is that your scient agricultural scientist should visit Pakistan and see the spectrum of technology which is available there and how that technology can be readjusted according to your local needs. Once it is determined, then it at the second stage, the technology can very easily be transferred to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would, like, I would like to add here that uh, you will find Pakistani agricultural technology much, much competitive than European, Indian or Chinese technology. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Um, I mean, uh, coming to the, this, especially this technology and education and I mean, transfer of knowledge and capacity building yeah is there any progress that started by two governments oh yes oh yes a lot mm -hmm. uh, very recently uh, the civil services of pakistan has invited the nomination from your country to send uh, young civil servants for training uh, my own ministry of foreign affairs is ready to receive uh, nominations from Ethiopian government. I have my personally conveyed message to the Ministry of Finance to send two nominations for a very high quality international f banking and finance course uh, in Pakistan. So we are waiting that your people should start uh, going to Pakistan and so that the capacity can be built, especially in these three or four sectors. Secondly, in the month of uh, May, I signed an agreement <coughs> with Deborah Foundation and Kirachi D Down Syndrome Society. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gebede, who is the uh, chief executive of uh, Deborah Foundation, told me that there is a, there is a large number of Down Syndrome patients in, in, in Ethiopia and they need technical support from Pakistan. So after signing that agreement, the Karachi Down Syndrome Society is ready to send their best internationally trained doctors to Ethiopia for 
not only treating the patient but also to educate and train your doctors and your paramedical staff. So I think this would be a very constructive engagement and uh, I have a full faith that the two organizations would learn from each other. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, as you know, youth unemployment is one of the big challenges in developing countries, including right. Ethiopia. From your rich experience, what, what way you suggest to this developing country so as to um, read out of this problem? Oh, good. Very good. My last posting was in China. And China is the leader of developing countries. And if you see China, it has raised uh, 700 billion people from the line of poverty to a moderate living standard so they they have been in, they have been doing a lot of work to eradicate poverty from their country and now in china people are much prosperous than 10 or 20 years before so i think from Pakistan's experience, we are also learning a lot from Chinese experience. So same experience can be shared with Ethiopian side. Very recently in Pakistan, there is a program called Ehsas. Ehsas means, is the Urdu word. It means feeling. I feel about you. So it's Ehsas is something which is elaborating around um, the, the, uh, the, how we can uh, eliminate the sufferings of the poor people. And how a long-term plan can be developed to eradicate poverty from Pakistan. So that experience is going very, very successfully. Dr. Sani Anishtar, our uh, uh, coordinator for that program, is a marvelous lady. She has been doing a lot of work. And I would say that a team of experts from Ethiopia this is a message. This has not been done before. So it's a message through your channel to your government that a team consists of uh, experts, poverty alleviation experts, finance, uh, small uh, business promotion organizations, banks, a consortium of such people should go to Pakistan, have a meeting with SAS program, and then learn our experience that how we are deploying the people for various small skills and how those skills are transforming their life and reducing the poverty level from the country mm -hmm. this is very important that's really great you made a great point well let me back to take you back to the crunch in the country uh, following um, the reports on some medias, some uh, embassies in the countries are urging the citizens to leave the capital. Mm. What message do you have to do you want to convey to this country and these people? Because just the, the city is in, in a quiet peace. Uh, look, uh, each country has its own standards. Hmm? Developed country has own standards. Developing countries has own standards. So their standard is not matching with each other, mind it. Mm -hmm. So this is a fundamental right. I want to live a life. If God has given me wealth, I, I, would, you will, I, I, I will enjoy. If I'm short of resources, I will live according to my size. So this is what, you know, the normal behavior of human beings to everyday life, according to their resources. So what they have done and what we are doing are two different sets. And we should not uh, be objecting uh, on their approach or on their strategy. Let them do what they want. But there is no harm in it. And secondly, <coughs> we have a complete solidarity towards your country. And uh, my embassy and my government is fully with the government of Ethiopia and we want a, an early peace in your society, an early uh, development in your country so that people may live peacefully, coolly and without any disturbance. So this is my message and hopefully uh, very soon these issues would be resolved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, finally, how did you find Ethiopia in your, during your stay? In, what makes you do in a conversation with the Ethiopian people and the Ethiopian government as well? 
Uh, I like to congratulate the Ethiopian people uh, to see their resilience. You are one of the oldest nations in the world, Ethiopia, also the ancient civilization. So you are the adherents of a very strong belief and very strong society. I have no doubt in my mind that all these challenges with which now you are confronted with would be resolved very soon. And inshallah, the people of Ethiopia will show their mettle to the international community. And these are temporary problems. It comes and goes. And you will, f you will be very soon a normal country like any other country. Thank you, Ambassador, for your vivid explanation and for the points that you have made. And dear listeners, you have been with us and uh, the, the Ambassador made a great point, the great message. Even he told us ways of, of taking us the message, how to change things and how to start new things. And hope you have learned a lesson. This is all we have for today. Thank you for joining us.